the failure rate in the United States, the dropout rate, if you want to consider that um, a measure of failure, um, is astronomical. I mean, when you have 60% of your kids dropping out of school, that's a big problem. They've given up. Students have given up. The biggest challenge we have with students is they don't believe that they can accomplish anything. And so they've given up. The system has focused so much on test taking that they forgot that behind the test are kids with issues. A lot of schools now uh, sometimes are, have a negative influence on kids. They spend too much time telling them what they can't do, what they don't do, what they don't understand that they can't learn. They're saying, oh, you're not going to do anything with your life. So other students would be like, oh, they suck. Oh, they don't help me out. They don't tell me what to do. I thought I'd, I couldn't do anything anymore. I'd settle for less. I'd do less. I would just accept, you know, mediocre. Schools usually teach you to follow a system. You don't spend much time thinking about what you want to do, what your passion is about. As educators, if we don't have that as our priority, supporting our students, making them successful, not only academically, socially, but professionally, what they want to accomplish, then what are we in the business of? I understand the budget crisis, we also have a crisis of achievement, and a high dropout rate. I'm here to suggest to you that the students have the tangibles. They have books, computers, teachers. We could always use more. What they lack are the intangibles hope, motivation, and dreams. And everything that he said was right in line with what I felt I needed at that time. I want to share with you briefly a program that can instill hope, motivation, and dreams. Despite the budget crisis, we can increase productivity and results at a lower cost. Daniel was working with the kids that no one wanted and the ones that the system had given up. <laughs> you speaking honestly, we couldn't hear you. I figured that this was probably a program that was reaching into their soul and restarting the pilot that somebody had turned off. The Find a Tree program is a program and curriculum which has successfully been used throughout the district to teach life skills and effectively raise student achievement and motivate students to stay in school and graduate. It was a once in a lifetime opportunity for them. It really begins with a teacher-student relationship. The teacher must first establish love and trust of his or her students. That's the first connection that has to happen. When I walked in, the, well, the whole class, I thought it was like, oh, everyone is doing what I'm doing, just joining so they don't go to classes. And I thought it was just going to speak some nonsense and stuff. I didn't believe him at first. All the students look at him and think, who is this man? I see many teachers employ what I call a sit down and shut up strategy. Now get out of my room! And that may get momentarily uh, silence in the room but they're waiting to disobey at any moment. Fine Tree is based on mutual respect. I'll respect you, you respect me, and our goal is to help you get to your dream. So I know the potential each of you have once you make a decision. No more. I want to live my dream. Students were captivated by that. They said, no one has ever done that. No one has bothered to shake my hand. No one has bothered to remember my name. I don't know everybody. But I'd say most of you have had some traumatic life experiences that caused some pain. So what I've recognized is the kids are in pain, they need healing. I'm not a trained psychologist, but what I do is I listen. Tell me your story. And all I say is, how'd you feel and what happened next? And he said that they pulled up in a truck and a guy came out and shot him in the back of the head and in the back. He was a special friend? How did it affect your thinking? Like, like hurting somebody? Why is that? Because my three moments died. They died, so now you, is it revenge or, or you've given up? I was like to the point that I was going to get locked up for selling the food that smoked my So you're okay with getting locked up for getting back at them? Yeah. But I don't believe that you want to be in a cell 
by yourself the rest of your life. I believe you want to be happy, but you don't know how to get there. I believe you want to be successful in some way, but you don't know what to do or how to get there. That's what I believe. And I believe you're hurt over his murder. How does their, their death affect you today? So, so that I can't concentrate in school. Okay, because of their about death? Too much. I'll be thinking about them too much. You've experienced things that most people don't experience or could never deal with. And you've expected to deal with this on your own. So your thinking, your aspirations, reflect the reality you've been born into. And to change and change lanes, that's like trying to change the world. So I can understand why mathematics wouldn't mean anything to you. College is not on your radar. You're dealing with some real life situations. It's a huge choice you need to make. But you can make. You can change lanes. Let's plant a new seed. Okay, Rodolfo? And those students immediately felt a connection with them. And the girl changed from being upset and having used profanity to laughing and talking about that she wanted to go into cosmetology. I could relate. I was uh, kind of feeling their pain. Everyone's hurt, and I know I'm not the only one. You know what? I like this a lot. I think I need more. <laughs> What is inside of you should be able to come out. And that's what Find the Tree does is they look at your inside and you begin to develop as an individual. Here's a test you cannot cheat on. Write down your talents. What are you good at? Write down their goals. Write down the skills they need. What are their interests? What are their dreams? I'm good at playing football. I'm good at being respectful. Good at moving fast. Good at washing dishes. Dressing myself right. And he starts asking them questions. Life would be so exciting if one day I could. What is that for you? And use their interest in that thing to build their, their educational blocks on. And based on that list, what's your dream? What do you want? Not what I want, what do you want? I always tell students that you're the boss. I'm not going to do the work. You are the boss here. So one student said, I want to be a pilot. Another student said, I want to be a doctor. To become a um, photographer? Is to become a computer engineer. Be a scientist. Now, where's that heart again? Is it open? I don't know where that heart is. Where did, I don't know how that heart works. Do you want a doctor like that? No. 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 Do you want a C doctor or an A doctor? A. A, a plus doctor, right? You want an A plus pilot too, right? Yes. Thank you, Brian. Become an A plus pilot, okay? It was a shift in delivery and it was a shift in how they received their instruction. He just made it seem like it was okay. He literally, it wasn't any dream and every dream was okay. Most people I meet don't know their dreams, all right? But that's why you're in school. You're in school to make your dream a reality. But with no dream, we're lost. And for the first time, they connect schoolwork and reading with benefiting themselves. It's the ability to say, okay, well, there's the dream, there's the tree. How do I get there? It's making those steps, it's making those paths. And it was really, Wonderful to see how directed they were. I mean, focused, professional. I'm really energized. I'm really I'm pumped. I want to do all the work. And sure enough, then they started to becoming more engaged. So not only were they now coming to school more often, but the teacher started reporting, wow, Juan, who never spoke, is now speaking in class. What's going on? And they see that the kids that no one has ever wanted all of a sudden begin to study and change their behavior in class. Then other teachers want to know well, what happened. You're facilitating learning, not dictating learning. You're not battling students. Students want to learn. You're simply giving them guidance and direction. Our whole focus is giving you the tools, the academic, the life skills, the social skills, the emotional skills to make that dream happen. There is a purpose to all of these courses. So the big plan turns into a smaller plan, turns into a smaller plan, which are actionable to day to day. So you understand, what is my roadmap to get there? Talking to colleges about what they require, what classes they may require to get there. Then a service project that embodies the dream. And so in the process of the project, they learn the financial principles, which are life skills, thinking skills, of how to get past obstacles, how to work with people, how to make it happen. So you want to help the community, the environment, young people with school supplies, right? Imagine you went to that school and talked to students who are in the most trouble and helped them to identify a goal and a dream. If you don't do that, 
Who's going to talk to them about their goals and dreams? Who's going to talk to them? Nobody. But the gangsters will come with me today. And we're going to go do this. Right? And tomorrow we're going to do that. Right? And the gangsters will talk to them about the goals and dreams of the, the gang. Right? But who's talking to them about positive goals and dreams? Only unless who does it? You. You must become that change agent in this community. Because no one else will. And coming from you, go play football with them and then talk to them about their life goals. And you will make this community a whole lot better if you take action on this dream. Make sense? You can do it, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you. So whatever the issue, the challenge, or the dream is, what can you do today? I really want to go to Africa, yes. So I wrote the letters that explained what I wanted to do and why I wanted to go. My mother told me her Buick would not drive to Africa, so how do you plan on getting there? And I had no money. So I started a club called Cancer Awareness Club at my school to raise money for specific kids whose insurance claims don't cover their cancer treatments. And I think what they learned to do was to organize, cooperate, listen, learn, deliver. And, and speak up for themselves. You just have to put your part in it. It's not like they'll take you by the hand and you'll easily get to where you want. People started reaching out to me. Um, I started getting big sponsors like Whole Foods, Lucky Brand Jeans. Um, and then within that next year, we became a 501c3 nonprofit organization. And then I'm gonna do the next one thing, and then I'm gonna do that next one thing, and put them all together, and it's my trip to Africa. Then we connect them with a mentor who's in that field. You go to the mentor with knowledge from your research, with your project being done. And I think that was invaluable. Someone to go, okay, nope, it's not unreasonable. It's not crazy. You really want to do it? I'll put you in connection with the right people. I will tell you how to get there. I'll tell you what to do. And then also let me build this myself. So not just think that, okay, well, they did it for me and I don't know how it happened. I was actively involved and I was a part of the discussion for what I wanted. Within the next year, uh, I was a 10th grader at Buckley and uh, I decided to get in contact with lawyers and accountants to uh, take the club nonprofit. Now, five years later, after hearing Daniel speak, we raised over $40,000, helped uh, over 30 kids in counting, and have expanded the club across the country to 10 different states. And when you start to tell people and you're passionate about something, they really do, they care. They, they want to see others succeed. Not only had our attendance improved, our dropout rate declined, and then we looked at the number of students referred had also declined. And that's where we know that we've been successful as educators. At the moment, my, my dream was to go back to prison once I got out of the Youth Authority. I went, I went to Youth Authority for killing someone, and I wanted to get back into the prison system because I didn't have no dreams or motivations. While I went to the program, I realized that I need to have my education, that I need to learn other factors in life not only my dream, but that I needed to learn all these other stuff in order to reach my, my, my goals and dreams in life. My own boys taught me how to be a gay member, but Final Tree taught me how to be a man, a responsible man, and to go for the things that I want. With Find the Tree, we can inspire a group of young people and adults to achieve their own personal goals. There wouldn't be many teens involved in games, there wouldn't be many teens involved in drugs. We would have doers, not complainers, builders and not beggars. And people filled with joy. When you're living your dream, the petty stuff doesn't matter. I'm living my dream, I'm happy. I have found my purpose in life. And I can't imagine who I would be without having that right now. They were actually beginning to dream of going to the university where they didn't think they could. They started saying, well, I want to go to college. I want to go to university. I want to go ahead and change the world. Children need a dream and the support and guidance to make it happen. And that's what Fine Tree does. And when that happens and give them a chance to heal, we see transformation and potential unleashed.